let's kick things off. I'd like to welcome Aaron Abrahamson Cody. He is a percussionist. Yeah, he has his degree, right, Aaron? Come on in. He, you have like your degree in percussion, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're a performer. He's amazing, super talented, and I'm very excited to be talking with you today. And we're going to get a pretty excellent performance from you. So, how you doing, Aaron? Nice to see you. Good. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. Tell me a little bit about your background, because not everyone just goes into playing the steel drum, right? Right. Um, so I learned how to play piano and drums at a very young age, and as I grew up, I decided I wanted to go to college for music. I ended up at Butler University in Indianapolis for my undergrad. That's the first time I saw one of these. I was terrible at it. <laughs> um, and then I did my master's at University of Illinois, and following that, I got my symphonic percussion performance degree and ended up playing on cruise lines in a jazz trio. <laughs> and while I was away touring, uh, I did about 35 countries wow. and I ended up in the Caribbean for a little bit. And at that point, someone said, why don't, why don't you play this? And I was like, well, I'm from Rhode Island. I might as well bring this to the ocean there. And uh, the rest is kind of history. <laughs> that, that's so amazing. And to be able to master and perform so many different instruments. I mean, just music kind of has to be in you, right? Well, yeah, it's a lot of practice. It's a lot of, uh, I feel really blessed that I was given these gifts and these talents. And so I'm happy to have the experiences that I've had. And all of that is a growth process. And it took, you know, decades to get here. But um, I, and I'm not done growing yet. And I still look for new ways to develop myself as a player and, um, and develop my career. That's pretty cool. Uh, tell me just a little bit about the steel drum because it's something that has, I feel like it's so unique, it's so powerful, and it kind of takes you to a place uh, that, that we all really like to be in. How did you really um, get into this? And tell us just a little bit about it. So being in the islands, you hear this type of music a lot. Um, I don't know if you can see the inside here, but this is an oil drum. This is a 55-gallon oil drum that... Um, Basically, what happened is after World War II, there were a lot of these uh, oil drums left in the Caribbean, specifically in Trinidad. And when they started banging them with sticks, they found that not only were they making great noises, but they were also denting the instruments. And as the instrument gets dented, you actually create these little pockets. And um, do you mind if I show you yeah, what they sound like? Yeah. So this is my lowest note here. And then they go across the drum in a spider web pattern. And it's a chromatic instrument. And that is one full chromatic octave in this. And I actually have a video on my YouTube channel where it shows you the breakdown of the entire instrument. And it shows me playing it and stuff. Um, and then the inner circles are just higher octaves. So it has all the notes that a piano has in terms of, you know, C's and C sharps. And, um, but yeah, so as they developed, they added more and more notes. This is a lead pan or a tenor pan, and it was crafted by Ellie Bennett, and he's, I think he's a, around 90 years old. He's from Trinidad, and he has a shop out in West Virginia now um, at Morgantown at the university there. And they have a whole apprenticeship program, and but he hand built this one. And if you read the Wikipedia page for what a steel pan is, there's 14 different configurations listed, and out of those 14, he's credited with seven of them. Wow! So he's like the guy, he's, you know. He's a steel pan. Yeah. <laughs> I think his instruments sound crisp and clear, and it's really nice to be playing on. I have two of these, so it's really exciting to have that piece of his handmade history. Um, and, and when he crafted these, I mean, it's the, the 55 gallon drum is sawed off and they sink the metal and it stretches the metal over uh, a fire. And then they have a pattern that they trace on and every pattern is a little bit different, you know, for different builders um, and different ranges of the instrument. There's bass pans and, and um, they go kind of like a soprano alto tenor bass or a string quartet kind of thing and you have all the voices. So I play the highest voice um, on this pan, and you'll get to hear that in a little bit. Oh my goodness, that, what, what a fascinating history of an instrument that um, is so popular when it comes to so many things, and really just it evokes so much emotion, right? Yeah, it's, it's such a happy sound. 
um, and there's so much referential use. You know, it really brings you to the islands. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. Um, tell me just a little bit about um, about you personally connecting to this, because not only do you play just a lot of popular music, but you've also written music as well. Oh yeah. Um, so with a jazz background and an improv background, I've had the chance to really build my understanding of music the more I dive into this. And with my symphonic background, I know what it's like to practice in a room for five hours a day without <laughs> interruptions. So I go, I, when I first learned this about five years ago, I walked into a room and put the steel pan on a stand and I s closed the door and locked it. And I was just like, I'm going to play for five hours. And that took 141 days. Uh, something Ooh, like that, 100, 150 days and of just playing before I could even let anyone else hear it. And it was such a hard thing to really kind of learn how to do. But um, I think a lot of the reason why I connect with this is because you can improvise on it. You can have this positive energy and interact with other musicians. You know, when I'm playing with a full band or even a duo, um, you never know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen today when I play. Like I, I could make mistakes all over the place, and, and uh, it's just something where you're always developing, and that's what live performance is. Um, one of the coolest things for me is feeding off of the audience and feeding off of the artist. When I go play a show, I get the chance to see the smiles in the audience, and so go see live music, <laughs> and um, and. I have the chance to really find out, like, do they like the song I'm playing? Maybe we tuck that song away if you don't like it. Um, maybe if, if you say, I really want to hear a certain song, that I try to learn it even if I've never played it, and I'll just improvise it on the spot. Um, and that's kind of a cool thing. And the more smiles I see, the more smiles I, you know, I make. <laughs> that's cool. So it's really an interesting energy to be playing for people. I like that. What's neat too is that, it, oh, I guess I have this question for you, is do you kind of like, you'll play something that maybe people wouldn't normally recognize on the steel drum and then people start to figure out, they're like, oh I know this, and then they start kind of singing along or humming along. Yeah, they're uh, like, because you you can play just about anything. I mean, you have a song list that's, you know, a hundred miles long. Right. <laughs> you know, people might not necessarily associate with steel drum, right? Um, I, is it kind of fun to see people's wheels turn? Yeah, like people will be like, wait a minute, why do I know that song? And I'm like, yeah. oh, uh, this song won a Grammy last yeah. year as a pop tune. You know, it's, um, it's when I look into a room and I see the age or I see, you know, the where I'm playing, who I'm playing for, I'm able to really kind of gauge the audience and say, you know, well, maybe these kids want to hear Under the Sea, which you expect to hear on this, but maybe those teens aren't really into this music and they want to hear Royals by Lord, or they, you know, they want to hear Taylor Swift. I've, I've had requests for Taylor Swift, and, um, and it's just one of the things I'm like, okay, I better go learn Taylor Swift. And not something I usually play, not something you usually hear on Steel Pan, but all of a sudden it becomes part of the culture of the room. Yeah. And that's how we all develop, I think, you know, is they, they get to learn from the sounds of the Caribbean. I get to learn their music and what their interests are and be able to come to a consensus about like, how can we celebrate together over music? That's awesome. I love, I just, I love that attitude that you have. Um, and I'll, I will ask you, what is it like, and then we'll let you perform, because that's the whole fun of this, right? It's so neat to pick your brain. Um, I'll ask you, what is it like being able to teach? Because not only do you go out and you educate people when you're out chatting and you're performing, but you, you also teach. Yeah, um, there are students who I've had that pick this instrument faster than I ever did. You know, they just pick it up and they, they get it. And I'm like, I don't understand, because it's still, to me, it's still a spider Because I locked myself in a room for 140 <laughs> days. <laughs> but um, when you spike someone's interest, and, and there's also students I've had who come in and they say, I really want to learn this. And then I start teaching them, and they're like, I'm not getting it. But then I find out, once again, their interest. And I find out a song. One of my students was like, I really want to learn you know, Darth Vader's march from Star Wars, the Imperial March. And I was like, that's a really hard tune to learn. It's all chromatic and everything. And so... Um, we dove into it together and I get to learn these things as I'm teaching it to someone so that I can really figure out you know how to reach this person so they get the culture and then how to learn from what I'm teaching them so and while we're saying that I do teach I'm happy to teach I do perform I'm happy to perform and I'm for hire I'm a freelancer and I play with a number of different bands um, I play with panoramic view that's 
a group that I lead. We play a lot of original music, and I also play with the Copacetics, who I think have won four or five, I think four Motif uh, Magazine Awards. Uh, I play with the White Eye Lizard Band. I play with Steel and Keys over at the Providence Marriott every week, um, and Steel Tide Duo. So I, I'm around, and hopefully I get a chance to meet some of you, and hopefully you've had a chance to see me. And if not, then um, get in touch. And go see him. <laughs> and you're going to see him right now. So I'm going to step out of the way and let you perform. So you have kind of like an ensemble of different music put together for us, this, right? This is a medley of medley. a number of different tunes um, so that rather than playing a full song, I can play little clips of a bunch of songs just kind of mushed together. So you might hear something you recognize in it, um, but if you don't, maybe someone else is recognizing it cool. at that time. So I'm going to do that. Cool. Okay. I'm going to step out of the way and hand the floor over to Aaron. All right. Take it away. Thank you so much. I'm going to start with one that I actually wrote. So this oh, cool. Is, that's what we're starting Awesome. With.
to be able to see like where you're hitting and that's so awesome. <laughs> um, what's your favorite thing about playing this? Oh wow. Um, I like tripping myself up actually. <laughs> I, <laughs> I went a little off book. I had prepared a little bit and I was like I'm gonna throw some of these songs in and then some of the stuff didn't happen the way I wanted it to. And you know you're not there yet if you have to keep pushing yourself to get there. Yeah. And once you think you're there, you always stumble and realize, I have to get there. Yeah. So you never really arrive until you're satisfied with yourself and you're never really satisfied with yourself. Um, and so I think with when I'm playing a song, I want to impress myself. I want to grow I love that. in front of the audience. And if I can impress me, hopefully I can impress you. Um, so I think that's probably one of my favorite things. I love that. I love that. And I tried, he has a set list right here, and I tried not to look at it because I was like, I want to see what I can recognize. And also, too, like you just mentioned, you kind of just go with whatever you're feeling, right? Yeah. And so I was like, I was watching over here and taking pictures, and I was like, I just, I love this. So I love the sounds. Thank you so much for joining us, Aaron Abraham Sincoti. Um, we'll find you online. We'll also put up a link on our website because you play all over the place. You have like, your do. usual spots, yeah. um, but then you're all over the place, right? Yeah, and you can look for me at Bowen's Wharf in Newport. I play there a lot. Um, some of the festivals there, the Seafood Festival and Bridge Fest I'll be at. Um, the Quahog Festival in Wickford in August. Um, just a ton of places. But uh, like the page, Panoramic View uh, Band, facebook.com slash Panoramic View Band, and you can find out uh, where we're playing, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Cool. Yeah. Always, always love bumping into you and seeing you and hearing you. are like, I bet that's Aaron. <laughs> love it. So thank you.